Actually, I've got a few problems to send. I'm just going to leave and rejoin. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to stay right you where you are. <laughs> if you leave, you now never bother coming back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> then, we're, then we're phoning up Tim instead. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with Glenn from Number One Projects, Hover from Behind the Mistakes, and me, KJ, from Crude But Efficient. For recording f- totally free of technical difficulties. Yes. Oh, and there you jinxed it. Thank you. Yeah, but <laughs> well I mean, done, KJ. I, mean yeah. I felt like <laughs> l- last week was the was the week of technical difficulties with pod- maker podcasts, it feels like, because three northern makers had difficulties, and I think two-thirds focused had difficulties and even making it had some audio dif- difficulties last week so i think this just shows that we're just one of the crew uh, so. i mean at the end of the day it was a difficulty but the worst thing that happened is we had to talk to each other more it's not that terrible at the end of the day is it <laughs> no it's not but it is <laughs> it is weird to have a good set and then realizing shit yeah this don't work at all we have to do it again and trying to backtrack what you just said that just feels awkward so we actually had three podcasts last week (laughs) (laughs) but only one of them stuck (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah it was i mean it, it wasn't bad talking to you i could do that every evening uh it's just that having these two hour recordings with some extra fluff before and after i mean it's it kind of spends all my my social skills <laughs> i have to re- <laughs> re- recharge a bit to be to don't have to make such an effort <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the worst technical difficulties i had was when we first started and i got 55 minutes into an edit and then lost that edit and had to start again. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that's a sure way of losing any motivation for anything. Yeah. yeah. So let's, let's put the technical difficulties behind us and talk about all the good things that happened since last were recorded. So, Glenn, what have you been up to? Oof. Um, well, no making for me. I I think I said in the half pint I was going to not start another project and not edit anything until I got my computer, which is ordered and is coming tomorrow, by the way. Ooh. So that's exciting. <laughs> so I had uh, the weekend in the garden. Mm, and, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a garden weekend. That's right. Yeah, that's what that's we decided. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so how did it go in the garden? Well, it's good. I, I had a good tidy up and then I started... Um, I rejoined the pergola project that I started last summer. So I welded some big bits of metal together, basically, for the start of a pergola. And I actually got it in position and got it concreted in and bolted to the wall on Saturday and Sunday. So that was what that was. I mean, when you showed (laughs) us the pictures, it just (laughs) looked like you were welding up the biggest gallows since the Roman time. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. no, it actually looks like a height restriction on a car park. You know those bars that stop the van. Ah, yeah, in. yeah. <laughs> you just have some chains uh, hanging down from it. To, That's yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, I got it. I got it in it. We took um, so I lifted it into the hole and got it propped up against the wall. But to get it into its final position took another two hours. After that, <laughs> <laughs> such a heavy lump of metal. But why, why that huge oversized thing? Did you well, find I, that by the side of the road? or? <laughs> well, actually, a friend gave it to me. They over-ordered on an extension they had built. Oh, okay. And the reason I'm using it is because, is because it gives me a four-meter span with no posts in the center of the entrance to the pergola. Ah, yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah, and it's um, 100 by 100, which is the same Miller's nice... Uh, same diameter as Chunky Timber, so all the posts, wooden posts that I add later will all match the same dimensions as well, so... Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, nice. well, I'll get that finished maybe next summer now. <laughs> <laughs> what about you guys? How did your gardening weekend go? Oh, I realised I have shoulders. Um, <laughs> I uh, 
I borrowed this alligator saw uh, from uh, my wife's aunt and, uh, of course, discussed with the neighbor about uh, cutting down the hazel um, hedge between us. And, of course, I spent the entire Friday evening. I was just going to try to test the saw after I tightened the blade and oiled it up. And I ended up doing the entire thing in one go, working in, like, shoulder height, cutting down trees. <laughs> And it went beautifully, and then I woke up on Saturday, and yeah, okay, I can feel that I've been working, and uh, <laughs> my body is not uh, accustomed to uh, the summertime. And of course, I, I scraped everything together, and I think I I run four or five trips to the tip, uh, the last one today, and there are still some left. But when I woke up on Sunday. I mean, that's the second day after a workout. <laughs> I was knackered. <laughs> I felt like an 80 year old guy. We got a relatively high bed, which is good because I rolled out and I, yeah, <laughs> I was bent as your pergolo <laughs> <laughs> bar. <laughs> so yeah, but it, it's uh, feeling better now, and it's uh, it's cleaning up nicely outside, which is nice. So you would have needed that uh, fest tool exoskeleton keeping your arms up. Thingy. Yeah, that would be really nice. <laughs> I mean, if 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 it said Bosch I mean, <laughs> or ordered it already, <laughs> I was just going to say that. Yeah, <laughs> Robo Gardener, you have twenty seconds to comply. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. Yeah, on my side, we we only had good weather on the uh, on the Saturday, so that. Well, it was mostly uh, cleaning the the patio, uh, finished power washing the the stones and actually assembling the the huge swing set I bought last last year, uh, and, and trying to figure out where to put it, and <laughs> putting it together, raising it up, and realizing that we can't really. Uh, move it around because it's digging down in the grass so I have to put put on some kind of something to actually be able to lift it so we can move it around and decide where to put it and then uh, dig the holes to actually concrete it in and I, and I bought a concrete as well uh, which I realize now I still haven't taken out from the from the car so we've been driving around with 100 kilos extra for the last <laughs> last couple of days but yeah that's one news <laughs> extra traction in the bad weather <laughs> yeah yeah let's let's say that that's why yeah yeah <laughs> I used to have a pickup truck, and uh, every winter I used to put some big paving slabs in the back to give me better traction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. I did the same thing this week. Uh, I bought a bag of this uh, self-leveling concrete, but I did carry it into my workshop, but it's just laying there on the floor. But I did get around today to make the two long sides of the table, uh, the ridge for... Uh, casting the top layer so it needs to dry until tomorrow and i do the two fine ledge and maybe i get the pour done tomorrow nice nice, nice. so it's uh, everything's worked out good with the concrete so far and the tabletop yeah it's no mysterious good. cracks or anything like that no cracks um of course i needed uh i, <laughs> I needed to move it off my work table because I needed to use the table saw and oh my god it's heavy and then I tried to, <laughs> to wrestle it up again today uh, to glue on the edges and now I know I'm going to pour more concrete in so it's I mean it's, it's roughly the size of the previous table I cast it and you need to be two persons moving it around to not risk throwing out your back <laughs> How much concrete did you put into it? Oh, 30 kilos, roughly. Uh, I took oh, okay. the, f or no, 25 maybe. I used a 20 kilo bag and that was just nearly not enough. So I had to mix one more. I, I did yeah. buy two. Um, and that worked perfectly. So wh where are you going to keep this table? Where's it, where's it going to live? Oh, it's going to be uh, right here over our shoulder in the the office space okay yeah so I'm it's going to be uh, pretty stationary 
<laughs> yep, it's going to be a move once and forget. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to move everything in the room around it instead of moving the yeah. table. <laughs> well, that's a pain in the ass because we have like, um, we have a chair that actually folds into a bed. So we actually use this space as a guest room uh, when my mother visits. And then I move everything around to fold that chair out. But uh, we have to rethink that because I'm not moving that uh, table every time she comes over. She she might appreciate sleeping on a nice warm table. <laughs> yeah, just put a mattress on it. And... She's, a she's like not... a mortuary slab. <laughs> I mean, she's not the largest uh, of, uh, well, statue. So, uh, so, yeah, if I made the table a little bit longer, it, it would work fine. <laughs> <laughs> How long is the table? I don't think we've said that. Um, it's uh, the length of the the rebar mesh I got. Uh, subtract the uh, cut off the ends. That's how far it is. <laughs> and then it's <laughs> roughly four squares across. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So, very much built I, in I think, space. I, I, I think Nine, 900 by 50? <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's... Uh, <laughs> I think it's 60 wide and up to 100 long, roughly. Mm -hmm. But I, I haven't measured it. I just uh, <laughs> I cut the rebar and I just, mm, all right, if this is a table and you have legs in the corner, this is the nice size. And then I just made the, the oak sidings around that. So I haven't <laughs> measured anything, which so is really nice doing projects, not measuring anything. That's brilliant. Yeah. But it's a, it's a decent sized small table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. So you you can sit and sketch a A3 paper and have your coffee cup and your pencil and a remote control and yeah, it's what you need. Nice, nice. But nice. that being said, um, I have reached a milestone in my workshop because. Um, we threw out our old couch because the dog have shredded that to pieces and, of course, got a <laughs> didn't help having two children as well. <laughs> so we bought a used couch uh, knowing that it's, it's still going to be drawn on and spilled in and so on. So we bought a used one. And it's a bit narrower than the previous one, which gives us like a half a meter on one of the sides where you can put a side table. And now my wife actually said, you can build one. <laughs> and that's, that's a, that's a first I've actually got my wife to like, uh, Oh yeah, you can, uh, you do woodworking, you can make one. So now she actually trusts me with actually that's making nice. a decent table. Yeah. So, <laughs> something to put in a living room for actually people to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a big Not one. Just did, one of did those funny it? things. <laughs> You should say you can make a table, but don't let it shoot anything. I don't want it to play any noises. <laughs> Just a nice table. <laughs> well, uh, I haven't gotten very much restrictions. So, uh, of course, there might be some technical. Uh, she might come back after this. It. <laughs> yeah. It's well no. worth putting a built in speaker in it. At well, least. some moving I parts have... at least. And a fridge for your beer. Yeah, I've seen, of course, I'm the one using, uh, probably going to use it the most because I leave my coffee cups everywhere. And also on the the armrest of the couch, I always leave my cup there and knock it over. And yeah, so uh, I was thinking about um, an oak top plate with maybe a recess for a coffee cup. And then I thought, should I also have a recess for this wireless charger for your phone? But none of us have a phone with a wireless charger, so that's uh, <laughs> yeah. a bit a miss. And then, uh, of course, you could have some concealed uh, compartment with a, a USB cable or something like that. And I was thinking, I have some leather as well, so maybe I should make a, like a leather hammock underneath for storage or something like that. And then... Ooh, maybe I should make some metal table legs because I have a welder now. So it, it starts <laughs> to becoming a larger project than just knocking out the table one afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I was yeah. thinking that you leaving cups all over the place. Maybe that's something to to build on. 
why not have a, a table that can sense if a cup is placed on it and not moved for for a, a while and then it just drives off to the kitchen with a conveyor belt put the cup on the on the bench and then drives back to the sofa yeah that's so simple yeah i um <laughs> I mean, you like programming as well, so... <laughs> I have seen those uh, people who have these anti-spill mugs. Of course, the easiest way is to have a lid. Um, <laughs> a and cup. then I've, I've seen someone make some contraptions where you can actually carry uh, beer glasses and so on, and you can tilt them and everything, and the glass just stays perfectly. And then you have this... Uh, these round bottom sippy cups that babies use that when you knock them over, you just come right back up. Mm. I would want something like that in riveted uh, aluminium or something like aircraft style and with um, <laughs> with a gyroscope in the bottom. So no matter what you do to it, it will never knock itself over. But with a battery and a gyro, and it's, it's going to be a large cop. But now I see the, the huge Stanley tumblers are the rage. So, I mean, you could fit an entire... Uh, <laughs> whatever in that one so yeah size is no issue obviously <laughs> so going off of tables for a second somebody got a video out this week who was it KJ, i guess it was, was me <laughs> 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 yeah yeah um, nice video yeah it was it was uh it was a fun edit i realized that i've been this is one of the pro- one of those projects that I've been working on for like a year because I think I I actually cut up both gas canisters at the same time, but then this one has been laying in the in the workshop to like December. I think I finished <laughs> it and then did the the smash video just in the start of January and then I edited it now. <laughs> so yeah, it's been Gosh. a long time coming. Yeah. So. I mean, great build and the the smashing at the end. You really went to town on that one. Yeah, that was the fun part. <laughs> well, I think it was half the video, at least. So, yeah. Yep. But, but uh, I think the most impressive thing was the use of the green screen. You said you only said last week you were going to try and figure that out, didn't you? Yeah. It. it I mean, DaVinci Resolve is not intuitive. Uh, if <laughs> if I didn't have Google and YouTube, I would never use that software because <laughs> I have no, I I can't f- feel go by feel and find where stuff is because it's in weird places in my mind. Uh, but when you find it, it works really well, and and you have so many knobs to twill with. Uh, if that's what you say, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, Just so, an extra hobby there. Yeah, <laughs> I've never seen anybody peel back the green screen and walk onto the existing set. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah, that was really cool. Uh, uh, I've, uh, I've seen someone do it. I think it was Emily the engineer, perhaps. Uh, so yeah, I felt like yeah, because <laughs> I, my plan was initially to have both these this video and the the chain bolts video have more or less the same intro uh but then i felt oh this is kind of boring and i should do something with it and then i realized that yeah i could just break myself over <laughs> lack of crudeness and efficiency because <laughs> the last one was neither uh, but that was fun because totally unrelated of course i saw a news article this week that uh, the um the laughing gas craze has come to Norway as well. And I was like, ooh, I need those canisters. And then I just Googled them uh, to see how much they should actually buy them. And no. So I need to drive around one evening just to see uh, where you can find these uh, discarded canisters laying around. Yeah, and now now they come in black as well. <laughs> Before Ooh. Christmas, they were only in blue, and now now they're in black as well, which, which looks much much better. Um, so that feels kind Are of. You still picking them up? Uh, I have a couple more, and I've, I sh- I have some ideas for maybe a third video. Uh, so maybe this has been, becomes a series. Who knows? <laughs> Do you think you can make anything other than a weapon out of them, KJ? Yes, that's that's my my plan to see if <laughs> if maybe I can do something else than a weapon. I, I realize that that's 
this is really funny that me who is a pacifist can't help making weapons and Glenn who can't play <laughs> a guitar <laughs> keeps making string instruments. I mean, what is it with us that we do stuff and, we don't that don't fit us? And Havard, who as he is, makes a hell coder. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but but going back to the video, uh, the the one thing that was I was most pleased with was the slow motion smash sounds of the water in the end. I mean, I listened yeah. to that a couple of times just for the the, the sound of water in slow motion falling. <laughs> was that that actually sound? Because I actually yep. noticed that, and like, is that something that's in post but no okay no that was cool. uh, just uh, what uh, my my pixel phones recorded when in so slow mo and super slow mo <laughs> yeah. and i was i was surprised that it looked that, uh, that sounded that good <laughs> and i and i i chose a, a day when the the sun was in a really good position so i got pretty good lighting as well so so it worked really well uh, filming the slow mo as well so that was i was pleased with that I think the deer stole the uh, show at the end, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so glad you didn't carry on the smashing part at that point when they came out. <laughs> <laughs> that being t- said, when um, when I'm going to do a smash video in the wintertime, I'm going to fill that bottle with something red. Uh, I, I got some red <laughs> food coloring in abundance. <laughs> <laughs> that felt a bit a bit much, perhaps, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you could you could have filmed that deer, and you could just finish off the video with the last uh, pummel and just some red splatter on the snow without uh, defining where it came from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could have been. Yeah, it was just just pure luck. I mean, I was in the kitchen and then just seeing those two walking by the kitchen windows. Oh yeah, hmm, I wonder where they're going. Oh yeah, they're out there eating the apple scraps. So I then it was just pure luck that I got it on camera. Yeah. Because I mean, some people get get mad at at uh, at people doing smash stuff with fruit that they just waste the fruit. Okay, this was rather rotten apples, so no one was going to eat these <laughs> anyway. But still, it felt good to have have the cleanup crew on film. Yeah. So it said in the title it was Fallout inspired. So was it inspired by Fallout? Just as Fallout's come out, or did you originally intend? Um, did you originally intend it to be Fallout inspired? No, I mean, I this <laughs> was just go inside with it. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, it's not untrue, but it was kind of playing <laughs> playing off the the series when I realized that this came out just. At, but I think most of the things that have some kind of uh, post apocalyptic theme are either Mad Max or Fallout inspired because I have spent way too many hours in both those (laughs) universes Uh, and I'm I'm too keen on on that setting so but yeah that was me (laughs) I I mean the blue color in the gas canister as well is kind of kind of like the Fallout blue so yeah yeah yeah. I mean you have to try how far are you in how far are you into the series I haven't started watching it yet, actually. Ah, okay. Because we we are uh, at the moment we're watching uh, Twisted Metal, another post-apocalyptic series, and I have um, this kind of that you only should watch one one show at at a time in a, in yeah. a, in one setting. So I, we only watch one sci-fi, <laughs> one fantasy, one normal life, so to say, yeah. at a time. <laughs> So don't to, not to mix, mi, uh, to mix the streams. What is it? Yeah, I'm on episode six. Do you want me to tell you what's happened? <laughs> <laughs> I don't the think we have time joke. for a total recap. So <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's good though. You'll you'll enjoy it. I think. <laughs> uh, I, hopefully, I mean, you are yeah. always a bit scared to 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 go into some media that you really lo- love the franchise for yeah, because. Yeah. I mean, it can be like uh, what was that? The Rings of Power. That was. <laughs> I mean, it had some moments that that was good, but everything that had some kind of connection with Lord of the Rings was really shit. 
I saw. <laughs> I think me and the wife we watched the first episode, and all right, th- this needs to to pick up like nothing else in the second episode, if we would spend time on it, and uh, we watched the half second episode and just looked at each other and nope <laughs> i mean that was uh the biggest letdown in history yeah um, and this i mean yeah yeah it was they could have done so much more interesting stuff with that premise if they just tried but yeah. this it just felt like an easy uh, money grab with oh uh, what what kind of characters can we put in there and what kind of references references can we put can we pull from? Uh, yeah. yeah, it was. It's, it's a good uh, example of that just throw throwing money at an idea is not uh, the solution for everything. But isn't it that the the Tolkien uh, the the guy who owns the rights at the moment really hated the the movies? And is not giving anyone a millimeter of the of the rights. So this is like build up of scrap rights from different parts of I don't know what. Uh... Man, I'm not sure. I'm not really into that. I, I really love the books, and I think this movie adaptation is one of the better. So uh, it's yeah. actually very much in line with the universe that. My feeble brain managed to think up while uh, reading the books. <laughs> of course, they they left out some very interesting bits, of course. But uh, other than that, I'm really pleased with the movie franchise, and yeah, I can still read the books and enjoy them, I'm not thinking that a bloody movie ruined everything. Yeah, I mean that's. You, I mean you <laughs> can't you can't make a book into a movie. That has to be a TV series at least, because otherwise. I mean, you have to cut stuff. Yeah. I mean, I may feel the same way with the Harry Potter movies as well. I think they are perfectly fine, even though they might do a speed run of the story. That, that's the thing. And of course, my wife uh, is almost grounds for divorce. Um, <laughs> I haven't read the books. I've just seen the movies. Uh, and yeah. she is, of course, uh, in publishing and have read the books religiously back and forth and back again um but yeah no haven't read those books um and i've been a narnia guy myself and of course um my favorite book is the one that hasn't been made into a movie which i'm really pleased about and then i think the last really big fantasy series that i really got like sucked into was his dark materials and then Mm. uh, that also was set out to be a trilogy and then they made the first movie and i just saw some pictures of the poster and nope i'm not watching that and of course the the movie flopped so they're not making the second and third book um so i'm really pleased with that so uh, the the movie was pretty crap i think but the tv series is is rather good, I think. Yeah, I I haven't bothered googling it. Uh, I know it exists, but yeah, no, the, these books I just uh, keep as books. And then... Yeah, you shouldn't just you shouldn't waste your time reading the books and just go straight for the uh, the movie version. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a viable option. Um, <laughs> and these days, I I don't have time to watch series as well i mean kj talking about all right we only watch one series in every genre at the same time i mean what you're watching several genres (laughs) i mean we got an episode in before christmas and we're planning to maybe do another one before summer so it's like (laughs) where'd you get all this time i actually don't know i won't normally tie myself down to a series but um they've been advertising the fallout thing for a few weeks now and uh, Friday night I had a bit of time, so I just settled down into it. And it is good, but um, I think it would make a. I would prefer it to be a bit faster paced. So turn the whole thing into a movie, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. The last series that we followed every week was, of course, Game of 
Thrones. Um, let's not talk about the last season, but that's really <laughs> good series with proper cliffhangers. So you were really looking forward to the next week, and you were sitting there at the the yeah. minute they released it to watch it, because. <laughs> I mean, someone died in every episode, and if you didn't see it right when it started, then somebody would send you a text message like, "Holy <laughs> fuck, did you see that?" No, <laughs> so, you, so that was that was brilliant entertainment. But uh, I think the last last one I got into is that long ago since I watched a series was Breaking Bad, and I only watched that because every time I went fishing with my buddies, they were talking about it. And I didn't know what the hell they were going on about. Yeah. So of course I I watched it and caught up, and the next time we went fishing, they'd all moved on to something else. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I was well worth it. I was slow into the Breaking Bad universe, but I saw the first episode and I came to work so sleepy because it's like, all right, just one more yeah. episode, and then it yeah. was four a.m. in the morning, and then uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm going to work now. So all right much just as well so there were several times i just all right i can just watch two more episodes and go to work and uh, of course this was yeah. pre-kids so <laughs> but yeah that's that's one of the best series i think that's basically made as a series from scratch uh, yeah yeah that no, was really good really really good and they had the uh, was it five seasons or something like that? And I just, all right, but they gave us a proper ending, not like, all right, we see that this is yeah. a good business. So we're going to milk it for 14 seasons and you get tired every once yeah. in a while. I mean, I have but several it's... series. I like after two or three seasons, I just, all right, I, I've seen what I need to see. There is no closure yeah. here. So <laughs> <laughs> they did bring out a spin off prequel series, Better Call Saul. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that worked pretty, pre good. pretty good, actually. Yeah. yeah. I, but I, then again, I, I saw the three first seasons of that as well. And then when the fourth came, I was busy doing something. So uh, yeah. I just put it on hold and I, I never got around to kicking it off again. And now it's it's so old that I have to go back and watch the first seasons yeah. to like catch up. And that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in a similar sort of place with that. <laughs> Let's talk about you got um, you did a, a short of you playing the guitar. Yeah, and... you're such a natural on the guitar. That was really impressive. <laughs> but I could tell you did a you did a turning the amplifier on, and you had the guitar in your hands a week or so ago. And I could tell you were natural. You just when you picked up the guitar, you just strummed it. You didn't play anything, but the way you held it and the way you when you were just fiddling with it gave some good notes. But, uh, <laughs> This time round, you played it. You're pretty good. Yeah, it's uh, I have a few uh, <laughs> riffs and licks that's in still in the rusty fingers, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I when thought you, when I... you, sorry, when when you're playing it, you don't you don't have your tongue stuck out. You're not looking at the strings. I mean, <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> I do look at the strings, but. Yeah, if I need to concentrate, I do it. But some of them I have the feel for, unless I have to move my hand up and down, then I need to uh, actually have a visual reference as well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I yeah. thought I posted that video and I didn't. And I just, uh, all right, I haven't been in the workshop the last couple of days. And oh, yeah, I have this video clip. I can upload that. So feeding nice. the. The worms the of the algorithm. machine. Yeah. <laughs> Have you started the programming part yet? Uh, no. Um, I was home yesterday, so I actually got the uh, CNC, um, like an attachment for the fan, and I took the power supply apart. Um, realizing that I can bypass the internal fan, the noisy one, but I didn't get a good fit on the like the larger uh, quiet fan, so it needs a bit more thinking. And of course, mm, that fan noise, yes, it is annoying, but once you start playing on the recorders, it's 
gonna drown out every other sound for miles so um, <laughs> i just put it back together again and maybe that's a problem for later so i'm planning on spending some time with it this weekend so um we'll see how that goes nice i um i, t- I think i mentioned last week i was take i took the diddly bear over to steve's yeah and left it with him and um, he got back to me a couple of days later with a track for me to use on the um, on the virtual video when I edit it. Pretty fantastic! I couldn't believe the noise he got out of it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, then I went over and uh, filmed him playing it on uh, Saturday as well. So yeah, I'm I'm ready to go when the computer's set up. Get an edit on. It's not even my turn for the podcast this week, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really nice. Um... The noise he got out of it. Is that really the correct term? <laughs> well, the sound, the music, it was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, they're no, really happy with it. Couldn't, you know, I don't have to get a new friend for this one, at least. So. <laughs> <laughs> but on the subject of noise, um, I have always wanted one of these uh, I, well initially I wanted one of these hand cranked uh, air raid sirens and then I realized <laughs> uh, you get electrical ones uh, the, the smaller versions and then I saw uh, Vandel uh, make one in wood and it's like Ooh. I really want one and then of course I started thinking about uh, how I could use it of course you could you could make it into a box. You could have a little solar panel and you can have a timer so it goes off at random times and then shut off and then wait for the sun to charge the battery enough. And you can hide this wherever and it could go off for years and for short enough time spans to people not finding out where the noise is coming from. But it's borderline <laughs> being cruel. Um, but now I saw a video... Um, where Yamaha actually made musical air ride sirens. So they had all these rotating discs were connected to one large electrical motor who really spins this up. I mean, it's it's crazy looking. And then it was actually some mechanical switches that open and close the holes for the various uh, ports. And when they were standing close to it or recorded it close, you could not really hear what it was playing, but like f- two kilometers away, you can hear them playing the sound of music or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like amazing. And I want one now. <laughs> and they, they said they've made a couple of hundred of them and they know maybe where two or three of them are and the rest of them are probably trashed somewhere, but... If any one of you have seen one and know about one, <laughs> I want it. <laughs> it sounds like the ideal next project for you, that does, Favard. Yeah. Um, of course, can you scale it down? That would have been cool if you could have a table one, but it looks a bit boring in uh, in wood. So if you could make... I think that's a project for when I get a metal lathe because then I can make it in brass or something. You can make a small oh, table nice. model who, who yeah. really looks nice. Brass and some matik and uh, yeah. yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> make it look like it belongs on a ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to move on to on my next project. I actually really want to make another cigar box guitar, but I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> no more string instruments. <laughs> that's your quest that's right. my quest yeah fair enough <laughs> michelle actually got in the uh, workshop at the weekend although i didn't with my blessing and she um, actually made a fantastic footstool hmm. nice yeah. brilliant so, it was out of a unmilled a big unmilled piece of uh, pine slab hmm. that i bought off a, there's a chap in the next village who sells these random bits of wood so it's a about one one twenty long piece of uh, pine by about forty centimeters wide, and she milled that up on the router sled, and then made a, a beautiful stool out of it. it looks lovely. Nice. Finished nice. in in Rubio, obviously. 
<laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah. So do you, have you started like a timeshare of the workshop? Do you have to book it in time now? <laughs> she, she, she did it all on Sunday. I mean, she got it all finished. And then she said, you know, I've had enough to, for today, but I promise I will go in there and tidy up on Monday. And she came home on Monday and said, you've not tidied up as a special surprise for me. I said, no, I thought you'd be angry. She said, I would not be angry. I would be really happy. <laughs> But good God, did it take some hoovering up? We filled the uh, we filled the uh, dust collector in one go. <laughs> there was wood chips everywhere. <laughs> oh. But no, it turned out great, and she's made a she's made a reel which she may or may not release, and I might have been in trouble if she doesn't release that now. <laughs> I'm bringing that up. <laughs> what are you on to next, KJ? Uh, at the moment, uh, it's uh, finishing the the rose cage. Uh, oh yeah, because it's I'm almost done with that. No, I'm not. I just have uh, the final welding everything together step, uh, and then painting it, and then it's done. But I feel like I need to have a large chunk of time because when I start welding it all together, it will be too big to to take inside. <laughs> in How big is it? Uh, it's it's gonna be taller than me. Like uh, I think God, man. it's uh, two and uh, <laughs> almost two and a half meters because we're gonna put it down in the ground at least twenty thirty centimeters. Ah, okay, so, only just taller than you then. Yeah, so the the end result. <laughs> yeah, and then we have to decide what to do with the top of it as well because I mean it's gonna look kind of like a. A really blunt pencil, uh, yeah. But at the moment, it has a uh, a little like fifteen centimeters, ten fifteen centimeters of just one rebar uh, stick pointing straight up. So if, if you're gonna keep that and put something on it or or cut it off, you have to decide that uh, before. Yeah, there's no there's no point in even suggesting to you just to put some nice scrolls or something on the top. Is there? It's gonna be something <laughs> a bit different, isn't it? Well, you have to you have to keep your brand. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, when my dad built something similar like this, the all the the points went up, and then he tied. He made like a a bow with rebar around oh, cool. it. Cool. And that looks rather cool. But I mean, I can't do what he did. That would be. Even if no one else has seen it except for us, but <laughs> <laughs> sounds like yeah, he's got uh, access to a serious burner there to heat it up enough to bend it like that. No, I just think he used stubbornness. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> it's a good tool to have in the in the toolbox, isn't yeah, it? Uh, yeah, he's got the get you to do that. <laughs> I think some of it has rubbed off on me as well. So, yeah. You're not stubborn, KJ. <laughs> <laughs> not in the slightest, no. I won't have anybody say that against you. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> have you scrapped the idea of doing the battery video, or is that still in the pipeline? That's in the pipeline. I'm still waiting for my connectors. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Because the, I mean, you know, the Swedish Postal Service. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, they still they still have a week and a bit uh, from what they said it's going to be delivered. I think oh, okay. it was the twenty sixth or something like that. That was the end of hmm. the span they said. So yeah. Cool. And yeah, I was thinking I was going to do a. Uh, fixing my mistakes video uh, as well because I've realized that I have some some projects that that need a touch up so to say uh, okay. from what I from what I published on YouTube so then I I probably should do a <laughs> what went wrong and how to fix it video <laughs> good way to clean it up so to say so that's the the knife and the dragon's and teeth. The knife, the dragon's teeth, yes, and yeah. probably the the kitchen table. That that's going to be my next video, I think. Uh, if we decide to fix that, then that fits nicely in with fixing mistakes. 
<laughs> and then we'll see how many others I can think of going back in my catalog. Uh, because I'm sure there's some some more that could use could use some love, I think. I think I've only had one of my projects go one of my projects go wrong and that, that was fixed today. One of the fingers dropped off the hand I made. <laughs> dropped <laughs> off. <laughs> like <laughs> leprosy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that was just a quick, quick bit of super glue. That's back in there. That'll be fine now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was the first, uh, the first uh, event, uh, the first day of the tufting course was yesterday. So that was really fun, trying out how to tuft a rug with a tufting gun as well. <laughs> it feels really. I mean, it's it's such a. Uh, such a crossover between the classical uh, uh, working with yarn and then having this two-handed gun you have to use. <laughs> but it's really... I mean, Is it a quick process? It can be. If you turn it up, it's <laughs> faster than I can handle, at least. <laughs> and I mean, it's, and it's, kind, it's not really self-propelling, but kind of. And you only, can only go in one direction, so it's it goes away so you have to know when to stop as well but it's 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 it wasn't as hard as i imagined it would be but i still have a lot to learn i feel but yeah yeah but the question is the... when is your one arriving in the mail <laughs> <laughs> well the same day uh i mean monday when i was going to the class i saw that on uh one of the auction sites where i had I've had a had it looking out for a tufting gun for a long time. Two actually be, became available. It was <laughs> the, the the crappy, uh, really cheap, not that good ones, but still, if if they sell at a decent price, then it's better than none. <laughs> because I I mean you can do tufting just by hand with a punch needle. You just shove a big needle through and then that cuts it. But that's kind all of right. boring to do all the stitches by hand. Yeah. It's more fun with a motor, even if it jams <laughs> a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> and you did what every good maker's done, and you're just making your logo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it felt like a good thing to start with. Yeah. In hindsight, it might have been easier to do something that wasn't small and round shapes and that sort of thing. <laughs> but yeah. But I think it's going to turn out fine. We'll see. How many more weeks of the course have you got? Uh, it's uh, five more weeks, so it's nice. six uh, in total. So the last one will be when I get back from Maker Central. I might have time enough to to go home and place my bags, kiss my wife, and then go off to the last. <laughs> <laughs> Let's but... see if the family agrees with that. But yeah, who knows? <laughs> I learned something new, and I mean, when I learned it. It's obvious that, of course, this exists, but uh, it was here in Easter. Um, we invited a, a couple from um, the kindergarten. Uh, let's, uh, we're heading out one day to the museum, so bring your kids and we'll make a day out of it. And uh, started talking, and then, of course, um, <laughs> um, the wife uh, of the other couple, uh, she's also into sewing. So then, of course, we started uh, talking because I'm now uh, working on the dress for my oldest daughter. And turns out, once every year, there's a huge, like, uh, a sewing, knitting, everything fabric festival here in Norway. It's like uh, one of those... Uh, uh, computer lawn parties that people just go in a huge room but instead of a sea of computers and porn there are <laughs> middle-aged people with a sewing machine drinking wine eating cheese and just sitting there with their own projects and walking talking to other people and sharing stuff <laughs> it's like it's not even a thing i mean that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, I want in. <laughs> so I'm getting tickets for next year. <laughs> like a three day uh, sewing machine festival. That's going to be bloody awesome. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I have to check if we have something like that here because <laughs> yeah, it sounds it sounds awesome. 
I'll look forward to hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not coming. I thought we were going all three of us. <laughs> we could do an episode. <laughs> no, actually, that does sound like fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It was wine, though. So. Yeah, yeah. I do like cheese as well. Yeah. Not wine, sure about your funny cheese, cheese though. Machines. I mean, what's not to love? <laughs> <laughs> There's been some slow mo footage of uh, sewing machines working on uh, Instagram just lately. Yeah. Slowed down, watching the mechanism going round and picking up the thread. Yeah. It's actually fascinating, isn't it? It's really fascinating. It took me a couple of years to understand how a sewing machine actually worked when I started using one because it felt like magic. How can the thread go? I, I can't really figure it out. I'm not one for having to figure out how things work. I just accept that they do and I don't care if it's magic. <laughs> Why spoil the illusion? I <laughs> uh, know I'm, I'm quite the opposite. I'm always listening after clicking relays and that sort of thing and trying to figure out, okay, yeah, the sensor is here, so then it feels and then you can... Uh, yeah, I have to figure out everything or think I, I know how it works at least. <laughs> Must be exhausting. <laughs> it can be. It can be. <laughs> I mean, it's the... I will. I will call it a knowledge paradox. Uh, we have a. It's a saying in Norway, and I think the equivalent in English is like, "The more you learn, the less you know." But there yeah. is also a problem that <laughs> I just call it a knowledge paradox. That the more you learn, the less people there are that can <laughs> tell you stuff. So, <laughs> I mean, at some point when you're on the quest of figuring out how everything works, you'll end up with questions no one can ever answer. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bit depressing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's always rough when you're in a meeting and look around and realize that, oh, I'm the expert. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's, it's a fun realization that because I mean, I, I didn't like primary school, but once you got to the point where you could actually choose your direction, then I really loved it because you're learning things you're interested in and you're yeah. surrounded with people who are interesting uh, in the same thing. And of course, you had all these teachers and professors that know everything about the subject that you want to know. So whatever question you had, there was someone there you could discuss it with or someone you could ask for the answer. And as KJ said, now you realize that you're not in that setting anymore. You're finished with school. You are uh, working with uh, vastly different people. And yeah, sometimes you end up like, all right, I have questions, but there is no one here that can answer them or even worse, you're the expert that people expect <laughs> yeah. have the answers and then you just have to pull something out of your ass and like, uh, <laughs> let's do that. And like, <laughs> hope and pray that no one asks <laughs> where I got it from. <laughs> no, I used to get, um, we used to do open gardens and obviously when I worked in garden centers as well, I used to get bombarded with questions all day. I, to the point where I actually got, hated talking. I used to come home so hoarse, <laughs> talking so much. <laughs> but uh, I got quite a buzz out of answering everybody's questions, though. Knowing the subject really well is a really nice feeling, actually. But yeah. I don't need to know everything that's going on in the world. But I think <laughs> it's... I really enjoy garden centres because that's the... I mean, it's basically a... a like a hardware store for everything green, but the people working there actually know their stuff. I mean, if you go to a hardware store, there are 20-year-olds yeah. that yeah. work in the plumbing department who doesn't know PVC from aluminium. So, I mean, I'm, I'm the <laughs> smartest one there very often. Uh, and then they come around, uh, I think it was Ron Swanson in the Parks and Recreation who was at the hardware store and someone came and asked him, can I help you with anything? And he just started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I feel the same way very often. I mean, uh, if I have a question, there's no point in asking the people who are 
who works there. But at garden centers, it's really, I mean, you can have really good discussions with the people working there and getting help and everything. So that's yeah. brilliant. It used to be the case here when, when I first started in that business that, um, you know, there'd be three experts, you know, qualified people who've done time at college, learning yeah. horticulture. But now you and quit after. and it's just the idiots <laughs> left. <laughs> no, basically, I mean, my, when when I stopped working in garden centres, I was the only one. So when I left and nobody was there, so I don't, oh. you know, it's a, it's a dwindling thing. It's a dwindling art, I think. It's an old man's job, isn't it? <laughs> Gardening. <laughs> but I mean, it is... I don't feel it's dwindling. I mean, of course, the older I get, the more interested I I mean, yeah. there I are mean, a lot of gar like gardening centers and so on. So there is a... Yeah, people actually gardening for a living and, um, you know, actually getting qualified in it, I think it's dwindling. Yeah, the yeah. qualified yeah, that, part. That might be, yeah. yeah. Probably. Because people don't... I mean, that's the one of those things that that's easily... It's easy to forget that there's actually some science behind behind it and it's actually a <laughs> yeah. lot of thing that you can I mean yes, mowing the lawn and, and fixing some flowers that's I mean, anybody can do that but yeah but think some more steps ahead i actually went to see a lady about her garden the other day and she asked how much you charged and <laughs> well it's gone and uh, i told her she said well, i have a, a really hard time you know thinking how you justify that money because you know i'm a secretary and i get paid such and such an hour and i you know i i went to college for five years i've got 34 years experience <laughs> <laughs> i've got insurance a van tools <laughs> i should be charging a lot more really <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right there have you had a little episode yeah you're thinking about the uh that banksy thing i sent you the other day <laughs> No, I just, I, I derailed when you said you were visiting a lady about her garden. <laughs> <laughs> well, that oh. used to be a thing in the in the garden centre when you were trimming the topiary. You'd have uh, a couple walk by and the guy would say, can you trim my wife's bush while you're at it? <laughs> 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 oh. Yes. Yeah, so and what did you respond to that? <laughs> I've not heard that today at all. Only 50 million times. <laughs> <sighs> all right. The first awkward silence of the evening <laughs> who indicates that maybe it's it's time to, to end the main episode. Ooh, sexy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm <be> just tired. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night. Uh, that, that's Bye. all, folks. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>